It seems Man of Steel saved its best trailer for its last trailer. Uh, let's take a look at the newest trailer, the newest look at Man of Steel. Goodbye, my son. My hopes and dreams travel with you. My name is General Zod. Your world has sheltered one of my citizens. You're the answer, son. You're the answer to are we alone in the universe. And I have to believe that you were sent here for a reason. To those of you who know of his location, the fate of your planet rests in your hands. I will find him! Tell me Superman is boring now, motherfucker. Did I say Superman was no, boring? No, I'm talking kind of to the audience. Oh, I'm, okay. The motherfucker is kind of in a joking You're the sense. motherfucker in this I instance. do actually I like you. I just want like you to know that, not me. Uh, <laughs> No, because people before were saying, ah, Superman's so boring, he's he's not captivating at all, Batman's where it's at. But that was not boring at that was all. was a good looking trailer. Yeah. That was very exciting. That was very captivating. Uh, we got to see him on fire and holding things. Is he actually- On fire and holding things? Yes. What? Yes! No. Um, so I'm confused. Is he actually going to see Jor-El as an adult? It certainly looks that way. They seem to be. It could be editing Because it didn't tricks. look like- you know, before like it's a recording, it's a prism, but it, it didn't sure as hell Marlon look Brando's that way. Marlon Brando's giant head yes, in crystal. No, that's what not, I was thinking of. It doesn't look like it's that. Not that at all. This could be so good. Um, before we were talking about that rumor, uh, that what rumor, Ken? This old rumor that I will link to in annotations. That was um, they were saying that it's possible that he isn't... Um, oh, the Krypton's not destroyed. Yeah. Okay, Krypton's well that would destroyed. certainly make sense as to why Jor-El's there. Well, uh, it started kind of a comment war because they were like, that's irresponsible, how dare you say that? I preface it as a rumor. And anyway, um, well, they, Russell Crowe had said, oh, well, no, that's not the case. But isn't Russell Crowe kind Australian? of... Australian, yep. The subject of having to sign an NDA contract? I mean, should yeah, we really I mean, trust that? I, I mean, I don't know. I mean. A lot of times, actors will uh, be prompted what to say in case these oh. plot spoiling questions come out. And but whether why would they the give it to him? Not, I don't know, because he's Russell Crowe. He's one of the larger stars Cavill. in that movie. Ca I mean, Cavill looks really good as Superman, but I couldn't name another movie that he's in. I don't want to say he's unknown, just because I don't know the man's he's less known. resume. Yeah, he's less known than Russell Crowe, obviously. Well, then give it to Amy Adams. I mean, I trust Lois Lane. What was Lois Lane doing in a spaceship? Why would that happen? fucking awesome. No, she, she looked in <laughs> trouble, like always. Lois Lane's in trouble. Superman's gonna come save her. I'm but. actually excited for this uh, portrayal of Lois Lane because I feel like she, she always gets painted as, as a, I hate to say the phrase, a damsel in distress. But she's supposed to be kind of a superwoman in her own right. Like, she's a modern woman. She's very smart. She goes out and uh, she, she's a journalist. She goes out and gets the story, and she's a good journalist. I feel or so. She's supposed to be. Even even as a journalist, she's been portrayed as like a bitchy journalist. See, who, like puts herself in danger to get the scoop. I don't and she feel like care that's, as long as she gets the story. I don't think that's the right portrayal of her. I don't either, think so either. Because she, she's supposed often. to be a modern superwoman, and like there's this guy, and he's literally the only one who could sweep her off her feet. And it's mm. that's that's where the beauty is between Superman and Lois Lane. Not like, oh, he's saving this bitch over and over again. What's he doing with this bitch? That's what it <laughs> seems like to me in the past, at least. Uh, I like that a lot. I'm a lot more excited to see Man of Steel now. Uh, before I was a little like, uh. Successful trailer then. Yeah, very good work. Uh, speaking of things flying through the air like a plane, we have another trailer, this time from Disney. For the first time, we have a crop duster in the race. Well, he's gonna die. Dusty, you're going up against the best races in the world. I'm afraid of heights. That definitely needs some help. Y'all know that, right? Yeah. That was fucking terrible. 
That's the whole trailer? Oh, no, there was more. Need. That's all I wanted to show. I will link you to the full trailer because it is a travesty. This is Disney's planes, not Disney Pixar's planes, not Pixar's planes, Disney's planes, which is more or less Cars 3, the search for more money. Um, I can see why Pixar didn't want to be tied to a story about a crop dusting plane voiced by Dane Cook who wants to enter some kind of plane contest and there's a love interest plane and there's a mentor plane. Well, I see no reason today. why this needs to exist though. I mean, I don't know either. You didn't. I, I didn't get enough of the trailer to like actually know the driving force behind it. Uh -huh. He's a plane. He's afraid of heights. Why would he enter a plane race? I don't know. I don't know why he would have to do that yet. <laughs> well, I don't know why we're doing this at all. I mean, the, couldn't this have been easily done with cars? And also, should no, it be done? No, cars can't fly. No, they can do a race. So even if a car was afraid of heights, it wouldn't really matter. And you get all the star the power of Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah, that's true. He is a, a powerhouse of ticket sales. Um, I don't think that play, Disney's planes should exist at all. I think it's a terrible idea. And I think it will make so much money because that's what they—that's that's why it's being made. Sure. I mean, that's. I mean, we go back and look at our childhood and see like the cartoons we loved. They were just toy vehicles. Like, Are you talking about Transformers? Transformers and Ninja Turtles and you know Thundercats. Power Rangers. They were all just to sell us toys, and we didn't realize it at the time. But that still happens today. But now we're smart enough to see through it and say, "Oh, this is just to make money and sell plane toys to little kids." I don't think it's to sell plane toys. I think it's to sell movie tickets because. Movies, the, the tickets to the movies themselves are such a small part of the potential revenue of a okay, franchise. Okay, yes, yes, that's true. But they'll, they'll build a planes theme park thing. I don't they'll think there was... have pajamas and curtains and lunch boxes. And do people still use lunch boxes? Is that a thing? I don't know. I don't know either. Um, well, I'm just saying, I don't think there's very much artistic merit to Disney's planes starring Dane Cook. And I think it's going to be basically a disaster. And I can see why Pixar didn't want their name tied to it, because they, they do more or less really great movies, except for maybe like Cars 2. But uh, that's going to be a shit show, and I can't wait for it. So that was it for trailer time. Two. Nice and brief. Yes, very brief. One good, one bad. And Enjoy. I like this theme that we have going. We should, Flying. Yeah, we should have a theme to all our trailer times now. OK, you're on that, though. Go. That's your job.